Providing support for learners struggling with learning barriers is very crucial for their development and educational success. Identifying their needs and um, implementing the um, individualized support plans is a methodical process that involves several key steps. My name is Mr. G. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to look at supporting learners with learning barriers. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and click on the subscribe button so that you get notification every time I release a new video. First of all, I think we need to have an understanding of what is meant by learners at risk. These are the learners that come from the previous grade and they haven't passed by themselves. Some of them, they may have been progressed because of a special kind of provision which is contained in the National Assessment Secular. And some of them may have also been progressed because of the fact that they have already uh, repeated in the previous grade. So therefore, according to policy, they are not expected to repeat the grade twice. Then uh, the other uh, kind of learners that can be defined as uh, learners at risk, those are the ones that may have been progressed because of age court their age is no longer allowing them to repeat the grade. So these are the learners at risk. So these are the ones that the support plan will have to be developed uh, for in, in terms of the next grade. So in the beginning of the year, uh, the receiving grade teacher or teachers, we expect them to develop uh, some kind of lists that uh, they will compile of those learners at risk so that they can know exactly who are those learners uh, so that they can develop uh, individual support plans which are best suited for them. After the receiving teachers or teacher um, has developed the list of learners at risk, the expectation is that uh, uh, those lists will be shared amongst the uh, teachers in the receiving grades or grade in order to make sure that uh, all those learners at risk are spread out amongst those receiving teachers. And uh, the next thing is that uh, a baseline assessment of some kind is going to be administered in order for the teachers to have an indication of the strength and the weaknesses of those um, learners that have been received from the previous grade. And after having administered the baseline assessment, I think that assessment will give them an indication of um, where the learners are in terms of the level of understanding when it comes to different subjects. And the expectation is that uh, the analysis of the baseline assessment is further going to give more uh, clarity in terms of the abilities of those uh, learners that are referred to be learners at risk. It is expected that uh, a screen tool of some kind will be used to screen those uh, learners at risk so that uh, after the screening, uh, teachers can be able to develop individualized support plans that are going to be intended to um, at least assist those uh, struggling learners that were identified to be having learning barriers in order for them to end up being called learners at risk. So the expectation is that uh, that will be followed by the creation of a portfolio of some kind, will, which will also have um, dividers and uh, inside the portfolio will have different subjects that are represented in terms of um, those subjects that are being offered at the school. Um, and those uh, subjects will be meant to uh, have information about the struggling learners, um, which um, their information will be in those portfolios. So that is the uh, expectation that uh, after they will have been screened and then uh, using a screening tool of some kind, that will assist in terms of developing this um, individualized kind of support plans uh, that are going to be contained in the portfolios that I've made reference to in terms of them having been developed um, following the different subjects that are being offered 
at the school. A structured kind of intervention will be expected to be developed whereby the teachers will be following that particular uh, support plan or the intervention plan, ensuring that uh, it is uh, targeted towards um, making sure that areas that have been identified to be um, problematic in those areas are being addressed. And there should be um, regular monitoring of the learners to ensure that there's consistency in terms of that particular process of monitoring whereby we'll end up having an indication of whether there is progress or not in terms of the individualized kind of um, uh, support plans that have been developed for those uh, learners. The next process will be that of tracking the outcomes and the progress in terms of those um, identified uh, learners at risk. This is the process of um, the evaluation of the interventions in order to make sure that uh, we track the effectiveness of the intervention strategy that has been uh, put in place so that if ever there are gaps that may have developed in the strategy on itself, then we can be able to intervene and uh, try to review and come up with something that maybe can uh, um, assist the learners exactly the manner on how we want them to be assisted. So the progress analysis of the situation will have to be conducted to ensure that uh, if the struggling learners um, don't show any improvement, there will be a need for us maybe to revise areas uh, that require further um, attention in terms of how the learners shall have fed in terms of the individualized support plans that we have put in place to assist them. It will be very important that should it be discovered that the strategy doesn't seem to be bearing some fruits in terms of that we intended to have, there will be a need to adapt the support strategy whereby we revise and try to come up with something based on the outcome of those um, struggling learners in terms of if there is any progress or no progress at all. So the refinement of the strategies is very key to uh, making sure that uh, uh, the targeted kind of um, progress that uh, teachers may have thought of in terms of addressing the learning barriers in those learners at risk are being addressed. So it is not something that should just be left like that. The adaptation of the support and the refinement of the strategy is very key to make sure that success is achieved in terms of improvement of uh, the performance from those learners at risk. It will be very important again to ensure that there is collaboration and reflection that takes place through the process of the implementation of the individualized support plan uh, which is intended to uh, assist the learners. So teachers must collaborate with one another and share successes and challenges so that uh, if ever there are those that uh, don't seem to be making any progress towards the improvement of the situation, they are standing a chance of learning from the others because there is collaboration. So therefore, it is important that um, the reflection of the practices that may have been applied uh, with the intention of improving the uh, learner performance it, it's taking place the way by teachers um, reflect and uh, if there is a need like I've indicated earlier on to adapt the strategy then they can be able to do that. It must be indicated that uh, through the process of um, assisting learners at risk through the individualized support plan uh, teachers must ensure that there is effective communication throughout the process uh, this is whereby we also e expect that uh, they should be in consultation with the parents in terms of uh, them sharing all the processes that are taking place at school so that uh, if there's a need uh, for, for some of the activities to be carried home, then uh, parents will be able to assist because they have been communicated to uh, in terms of um, what is happening so that uh, it is a joint responsibility of assisting the learners at risk 
um, to ensure that they improve on their performance. So if it means that there must be sharing of resources, let it be if there are some resources in the form of um, some work that um, are contained in some textbooks or any other sources and they have to be carried home or taken home. That is something that should be communicated and be shared with parents. So it is something that is supposed to encourage partnership between parents and, and, and the teachers or between the school and the teachers because um, um, taking care of kids in terms of performance, it shouldn't only be limited to the school, but it's something that parents should also take part in that so that they, we, uh, they all um, ensure that they stand a better chance of bringing in the kind of improvement which is um, having to do with the improvement of learner performance uh, takes place because um, that will be guaranteed by the fact that there is a good working relationship between the two stakeholders. Allow me to indicate that uh, I'm not going to make this video to be so long because uh, the intention is that in the next coming video or the next part of this particular discussion we're going to look at an, an, an example of a template that uh, teachers can use as part of the um, individualized um, support plan of some kind. So we have a proposed kind of a template which can be used as the one that uh, they can develop and uh, uh, save that in the portfolio file of the uh, struggling learner or the learner at risk. So please don't forget to uh, comment, uh, like, share and click on the subscribe button so that you get notifications in terms of when we released a new video. Thank you very much for your time.